Today we have in our video a Type 3 AK-47 Hungarian, a Type 3 AK-47S Bulgarian with a Russian Type 1 pistol grip and a conversion. A Russian AK-74 1987 and a Bulgarian AK-74 with Russian stock set and a custom refinish on it. Um, we're just going to be talking about the differences between the 74 and the AK-47. We're going to briefly mention the AKM, but uh, we don't have one here today. We, of course, have one. We have plenty, but we just wanted to show you guys what the difference was between the, the two AK variants, as people know them. I mean, there's many, many more different variants. There's three AK-47s, for example, but this is... Uh, as good a way as any to show you what's basically what the breakdown between them is. David, can you show us, this is David of Z Guns by the way, pull the mag out of the AK-47 and break it down real quick, pull the bolt out, show us how it's built. So we've been shooting it today. Starting with the receiver, it's a milled receiver. See, there's no center support. Um, this is a Type 3, meaning there are two earlier versions before this, the Type 1 being stamped. Uh, and you could see this is an American reproduction, of course, semi-auto only, but the rest of the parts on this are actual military surplus Hungarian parts. Double hook trigger, the ejector, everything's milled into this receiver and then put on. The safety's uh, a very stamped heavy gauge steel. So is the cover. And if, well, this is a Russian slab side, I brought that from Afghanistan. But if you have the original AK-47 magazines, they were slab sized, they were big, they weren't stamped, they didn't have as much ribs, thicker gauge metal, heavy. Yeah, and so the bolt doesn't have lightning cutouts on it. See, it's, it's one way smooth. The spring, not double wound, that was, and instead of two pieces of wire, there's an actual piston. So there was a lot of machining involved and a lot of effort went into these. These were severely overbuilt. Go ahead and assemble that for us, please. This shoots the 762 by 39. All right, now Go ahead and set that down. Show us the Russian AK-74, which will show you some of the manufacturing techniques used. Go ahead and clear it. See, a much lighter gauge stamp sheet metal cover. Now, start with the basics. The receiver itself, stamped sheet metal, got a center support for strength. It's got forged trunnion in the back, forged trunnion in the front. The rails inside are now stamped and welded in. They're spot welded. This one has the factory markings. However, this is a semi-auto receiver. Still very collectible and still we very much enjoy. Double wound hammer spring. Show me the Bull carrier group. Oh, here. All right, so there's lightning cuts that are that make it lighter. Overall, it's a little. I mean, besides being a different caliber, the AKMs follow the same principle. Uh, and the recoil springs, you could see, has two pieces of wire that are looped back and forth that are assembled. A lot of pieces are cast on here. This isn't even, oh, this is a 1987, but this isn't even uh, pinned in place like the, front, like the pieces on the AK-47. 
This is just dimpled in with a die. We were able to reproduce that over here at Z Guns, but it just goes to show you that two completely different generations of AK, very similar in function, but completely different manufacturing. Plastic furniture, for example, very sturdy, weather resistant. It's not as nice as the wood in some aspects, but it is stronger and lighter. So go ahead and fire them for us, uh, starting with the AK-47s. Okay. So, Hungarian AK-47, Type 3. Pretty good heavy uh, recoil, but more of a gentle push compared to the sharper but lighter recoil of the AK-74. Show us the folding mechanism on the S. S for Skladnoi. So AK-47 S. What that means, or what that abbreviates from, is Automat Kalashnikova, Soroksidmo Goda Skladnoi. Heavy gauge stamped. Uh, this differs from the AKM in that it has a slight angle to it, which some prefer, others don't like. The AKM was a straighter angle and a little robust locking mechanism. But other than that, it maintained it all the way through. 74s, of course, had a side folding stock we'll show you in a later video. And this one has a very unique thing. These are original Type 1 AK-47 grips with an adapter that my brother manufactures. And it was just something we liked because the Bulgarian AK-47 didn't come with an interesting grip, so this is a much better one. Yep. Go ahead and set that down. Show us the Russian AK-74. And just to show us the futility of the idea of a bump stock, after shooting some semi-rounds, go ahead and try to bump fire. This is a lighter recoil weapon, very similar to 5.56, but this shoots a 5.45 by 3.9 cartridge. Very accurate cartridge, and does very well against So as you can see, very easy to bump fire, zero modifications, no bump stock. Uh, does that make it any more dangerous than it is in semi? No, it just proves the futility of certain laws and certain regulations. But um, I hope you could see in this video just how manageable the recoil is with that muzzle brake that they chose to go with instead of a muzzle nut and with a much smaller round. These this round is very good on medium to light game. Out to 500 meters, it's very accurate. AK 47s are accurate as well, but the bullet drop becomes a factor and the quality of the ammunition doesn't let you hunt past 200 meters if you hunt with an AK. We have successfully. Um, 74 does a whole lot better. Go ahead and shoot that last round. Or the last mag. Should well, we I have some time on the video. It. There you have it, folks. Anyways, y'all have a good one.